Hello, Prime Minister, how are you? A bit stressed. Yes, I can understand that. What's that you say? You've got to close the schools again. Ah, oh, see. Yes, the children will have to work at home. You want me to do what? More music lesson videos? You're a big fan. Hi, thank you. Oh, a fan of Kevin the Toad. I see. Well, I'm, I'm afraid he's hibernating. It is winter. Wake him up. I'm, I'm not sure. He gets really grumpy in the mornings. You can't do anything with your hair in the morning either. Well, I don't think he has that problem. Coffee? Okay, I'll try that. I'll have to find him first though. Yes, I'll go and look straight away. I'm not sure he's going to be available. I think I'd be better doing it on my own. What? You don't want it if it's just me on my own. You definitely want Kevin the Toad as well. Oh, okay. Good luck with running the country. No, I don't think Kevin wants the job. Thank you. Okay, bye. Bye. He's the musical toad. The musical toad. Yeah. Listen now. <laughs>why did you tell him I was hibernating? Well, to be honest, Kevin, you're not the easiest person to work with. I'm not a person. I'm a toad. See, that's exactly what I'm talking about. You're just being really picky. Anyway, looks like if the Prime Minister's asked us, we're really going to have to sort something out. What should we do for this week? Vocabulary of the week. Tempo. This week we're going to be looking at that word, tempo. All music has got something called a beat and a pulse, and it's a bit like a musical clock. It tick tock tick tocks along like this. Tick tock tick tock tick tock tick tock. Sometimes the beat and the pulse can change. Sometimes it can go faster, like a cheetah. Zoom. Sometimes it can go slower, like a tortoise. And his name is Steve. Steve the tortoise. Just look at this video of Steve and see how slowly he moves as he eats his dinner. We can remember all about those tricky vocabulary words by using this. The tick tock is called the beat and the pulse. The beats and pulse can change by going faster and slower. And the faster and slower of the beat and the pulse is known as the tempo. So all tempo means is how fast is the music. Have a listen to Mr S play his guitar and see if you can tell if he's playing fast tempo, slow tempo or medium tempo. Not too fast and not too slow. Let's go. That one was a slow tempo. That one was definitely a fast tempo. And that one was a medium tempo. Kevin. I wonder if you can guess the animal I'm going to describe. See if you can work it out from these clues I'm going to give you. OK, first of all, this animal has got no arms and legs. Um. It can't see very well. And it eats dirt and lives under the ground. Can you guess what it is, Kevin? 
I know. It's an earthworm. Yes, that's right. An earthworm. And I know a song about an earthworm. It's a little bit of a silly song. Do you want to learn it? Yes, please. It's called The Littlest Worm. The littlest one, the littlest worm you ever saw, you ever saw, got stuck inside, got stuck inside my soda straw, my soda straw, the littlest worm you ever saw, got stuck inside my soda straw. He said to me, he said to me, don't take a sip, don't take a sip, cause if you do, cause if you do, you'll get real sick, you'll get real sick. He said to me, don't take a sip, cause if you do, you'll get real sick. I took a sip, I took a sip, and he went down, and he went down, right through my pipe, right through my pipe, he must have drowned, he must have drowned, I took a sip, and he went down, right through my pipe, he must have drowned. He was my pal, he was my pal, he was my friend, he was my friend, there is no more, there is no more, this is the end, this is the end, he was my pal, he was my friend, there is no more, this is the end. And now don't you fret, now don't you fret, and now don't you fear, now don't you fear that little worm, that little worm had scuba gear, had scuba gear. Now don't you fret, now don't you fear that little worm had scuba gear. Now don't you fret, now don't you fear That little worm had scuba gear I love that song. I'd like to know more about earthworms. Well, I think I've got a video from the BBC somewhere that we could watch together. Let's have a look. Most of us wouldn't give earthworms a second glance, but not Emma Sherlock. Earthworms are her passion. You see, Emma is curator of worms at the Natural History Museum in London. Not only that, she's president of the Earthworm Society of Britain. As Emma is about to reveal, there's far more to the humble earthworm than first meets the eye. Most people think we've only got one species of earthworm in the UK, but that's really not true. We actually have about 27 different species. We've got stumpy green ones, and they're bright green, stripy ones. These ones, when they stretch out, you'll really see the stripes on them. We call them tiger worms because of the stripes. We've got pink ones, we've got grey ones, we've got ones with black heads, we've got sort of deep red ones, some are really large, sort of 30 centimetres in length, right down to some adults being just a few centimetres, so massive diversity. The best way to sample earthworms really is just to dig a hole in the ground. So I generally dig around a plot, pull out the uh, square I've dug, and then just go through it and try and see how many earthworms are in here. And in a plot this size, potentially it could be 50, 100, maybe even if it was a really, really rich patch, maybe even up to 200 earthworms. All gardeners know that earthworms are really, really good for the soil. But the reason that is, is because they are burrowing down into the soil, they're letting air in, letting carbon dioxide out, 
Earthworms are the recyclers of the planet. They are breaking down all the organic rubbish and releasing all those nutrients back into the soil to be used again by the plants. Without earthworms in our soils, life would pretty quickly dry up. Well, that was good, I enjoyed that. But now it's time for... Tumbra of the Week! But what is a Tumbra? Good question. Tambra is quite simple really. All it is, is another word, posh musical word, that means the type of sound. So, for example, is it the sound of a frog ribbiting? Don't talk to me about frogs. Or sound of a bird singing. Or, in music, different sounds of different instruments. So, for example, I have here my guitar, which uses metal strings to make the sound and I strum those to make this timbre. Or I could get a wind instrument like this recorder here and which I blow into to get a very different sort of sound. So really there are millions of different timbres all around the world lots of different instruments, lots of different sounds. If you close your eyes wherever you are in the world, you will always hear different sounds around you. We're going to focus today on the first section of instruments called the woodwind section. This piece of music, it's called a short ride in a fast machine. Fran, what does it make you think of? It makes me think that I'm going on a short ride in a fast machine. Yes, that's exactly why it's called that. It was written by someone called John Adams. Fran, why are you making holes in a carrot? Because we're going to use these to discover how woodwind instruments like these work. What's a carrot got to do with woodwind instruments? You will see. I'm not sure what this carrot business is all about, but this definitely isn't a carrot. Obviously, it's a clarinet, which belongs to the family of woodwind instruments. Nice! And this is a recorder, and it also belongs to the woodwind family. Lovely, but the clarinet and the recorder make musical sounds in different ways. When Fran blows into her recorder, the air is forced through a narrow passage called the windway and hits something called the labium. Watch what's happening in slow motion. The stream of air is flicking back and forth. One moment the air is above the labium, the next it's below it. This movement, which is actually happening really quickly, makes the air inside the recorder vibrate. This is what makes sound waves that we can hear. And the Irish whistle, that works in a similar way. Beautiful. And at the other end of the scale is the amazing Australian didgeridoo. A clarinet is called a reed instrument. That's because it has got something called a reed attached to the mouthpiece. And they're called reeds because they used to be made from plants called reeds. Today, a reed is a very thin piece of material that vibrates against the mouthpiece when you blow over it. This vibration makes the air inside the clarinet vibrate too. That creates sound waves and the notes that you hear. OK, so that's how a clarinet and a recorder make a single sound. The question is, how do we make them play lots of different notes? It all depends on how much air in the instrument is vibrating. And we can demonstrate how this works with just some everyday drinking straws. So, Greg, here's yours. Thanks. And what you need to do is pinch the end to make a mouthpiece. Then you cut the corners off to make it into a point. Now, if you do this at home, do be careful with the scissors. Have you done it? Yep. Now, all you've got to do is blow. <laughs> good, good. Now, cut a little bit off the end of the straw and try it again. <laughs> now, because we've cut a bit off, that means the straw is shorter and so there's less air inside it. And because there's less air vibrating, the note has gone higher. It has what we call a higher pitch. Now, cut a little bit more off. OK. Yep. And then play it. And it's got a higher pitch still. Now, watch this. <laughs> Love it. Right, right, so all I have to do to make my clarinet play a higher note is... <sighs> 
cut it in half. Uh, no. Be funny though. It, it might be, but it would also ruin your clarinet. Okay. Woodwind instruments have a series of holes along the tube. We can change the amount of air that's vibrating inside by covering the holes up. So, if we cover all the holes in a recorder, that means there's a lot of air vibrating in the tube because it can't escape through the holes. And the result is a note with a low pitch. If I cover up just one hole, that means the air can escape. And so less air vibrates, and this makes a note with a higher pitch. Right, I've got it. Your clarinet has holes in it too, but it works a bit different because you use keys to cover them up. Exactly. Show off. Right, you might think that all woodwind instruments are made of wood, but they're not. Saxophones are made of metal and recorders can be plastic. In fact, you can make woodwind instruments out of all sorts of things, even a carrot. Ah, oh, finally, I was wondering when the carrot would crop up. All you have to do to make a woodwind instrument is make something with a space inside that is full of air that can vibrate. So, to make my musical carrot, I've hollowed out its centre, like that, and I've just made a series of holes in a row. Right. These little holes line up with the big hole that's down the middle, okay. and you might need a grown-up to help you with that bit. Next, you take half a pepper and stick it on one end, and a mouthpiece and stick it on the other. This is getting even more bonkers. And there you have one complete musical carrot. <laughs> it, it's really cool. It, it works though, doesn't it? Hey Fran, here's something interesting. <coughs> Around 4,000 years ago, if you were a shepherd knocking about in ancient Greece, minding your flock, you could pass the time by playing your pan pipes. Greg, I don't know what to do with you. The flute is a member of the woodwind family and it differs from the other woodwind instruments in that it doesn't have a reed and you make the sound by blowing across this little hole here. To make a sound on the oboe, you have to place the reed on your lower lip and roll your lips over your teeth and blow. Playing both very quietly and very loudly on the oboe is quite difficult. It's all controlled by the muscles in your tummy, your diaphragm, just below the rib cage. So to play quietly, you have to almost use more air and more support than if you were playing loudly. Um, the clarinet is basically just a cylindrical uh, wooden tube uh, with finger holes so that as I take more fingers off the instrument, uh, the pitch will rise. Like that. And a lot of met metal keys in order to enable me to play all the notes in between those notes, the chromatic notes. The bassoon is a woodwind instrument and you play it by using double reeds, which are so cool because it's two pieces of bamboo tied together and when you blow it vibrates. You then attach it onto this metal pipe, which is called a crook, and the air goes in all the way down and up again. It's got a series of holes which are open and closed by pressing keys, which change the pitch. It's got a very large range and you can play very low. And then also very high. And then everything in between. Oh. 
The saxophone family has many different members. It starts with the sopranino, which is about this big, and then it goes down all the way to the sub contrabass, which you have to stand on a chair to play. Although the saxophone is classed as a woodwind instrument, it's actually made out of brass. It does have a mouthpiece and a single reed, very similar to the clarinet, but obviously it's a different shape and size. The saxophone has quite a wide range of dynamics. By dynamics, I mean volume. It can play really quietly, and it can obviously play really loud. Here's the first solo on soprano. I heard another music word that I know there. Pitch. Pitch means the sound can be high or the sound can be low. I can make my voice high and low. Listen. Hello, my name is Kevin. Hello, my name is Kevin. That's amazing, Kevin. How do you do that? I'm really impressed with that. Anyway, that's about all the time we've got for this week. So we'll come back to pitch next week. Thanks for telling us all about that, Kevin. Now, Kevin, do you think you could introduce our last section? Because it's time for... <laughs> That's a great use of that low-pitched voice, Kevin. The first thing to do is get a piece of paper, write Kevin's Quiz of the Week at the top, and then write the numbers 1 to 10 down the left-hand side of the page. Here's your first practice question. Question one. What is the name of a really cool toad from this video? Is it A. Kevin, B. Barry or C. Dave? I'm pretty sure you know the answer is Kevin. So we need to write A next to number one. We've done the first one together. So here we go with question two on your own. Who phones Mr S to ask for more shows? Is it A. The Queen, B. The Prime Minister, or C. Lord Voldemort? Question 3. Faster and slower in music is called what? A. Dynamics, B. Pitch, or C. Tempo? Question four. What is the name of the tortoise? Is his name A. Kevin, like me, B. Steve, or C. Shelley? Question five. In the song, what does the littlest worm wear to survive being swallowed? Is it A. A hat? B. A jetpack or C. Scuba gear. Question 6. How many species of earthworm are there in the UK? Are there A. 2 species, B. 27 or C. 270? I like to eat earthworms by the way. Seven. Timbre in music means what? A. The type of sound or the instrument. B. Fast or slow. Or C. High or low. Question 
question eight. Fran, in the video, makes a wind instrument using what vegetable? A, a potato, B, a swede, or C, a carrot? Question nine. Which of these woodwind instruments is actually made from wood? Is it A, a clarinet, B, a flute, or C, a saxophone? Two of them are made of metal. And the last question, question 10. Which woodwind instrument does not use a reed when you blow it? Is it A, a flute, B, a clarinet, or C, a bassoon? OK, I think it's time for the answers. What is the name of a really cool toad? Well, we all know it's Kevin. Number two, who phones Mr S to ask for more shows? It's the Prime Minister. Number three. Faster and slower in music is called Tempo C. Number four. What is the name of the tortoise? His name is Steve. Number five. What does the littlest worm wear to survive being swallowed? It's C. Scuba gear. So he can breathe underwater. Number six, how many species of earthworm are there in the UK? There are 27. Number seven, timbre in music means A, the type of sound or the instrument. Number eight, Fran from House of Sound makes a wind instrument using a carrot. Number nine. Which of these woodwind instruments is actually made from wood? It's A, a clarinet. A flute and a saxophone are both made from metal. Number ten. Which woodwind instrument does not use a reed to blow it? It's A, a flute. So, add up the number you've got on your questions and write it at the bottom. But don't worry if you haven't got very many right, it doesn't matter, as long as you've had fun. Well, Kevin, I've enjoyed working with you this week. It's a shame I haven't been able to see the children in school, but it's been nice to spend some time with you instead. We've learnt about tempo, fast and slow. We've learnt about timbre, the types of sound and the instruments. And we've also talked a little bit about pitch high and low sounds but that's all the time we have this week so until next time bye see ya he's a musical toad the musical toad yeah listen now